Hey, thank you for joining me. Anthony Sequera here with CBT Nuggets. And in this micro nugget, we're going to take a look at the initial setup of one of our Cisco MDS devices. We know the MDS devices are the backbone of the storage area networking component of our modern data center. Here in this micro nugget, we'll boot one up, factory default configs, and see what happens. This is a slice of our DCUFI course here at CBT Nuggets. If you've forgotten that your MDS devices share a core operating system with the Nexus devices on the LAN side of your data center, you'll quickly be reminded of that when you boot this factory default device. You're going to see that it plows you right into a basic system configuration dialog box. Now, I cheated here, as you can see, and initiated this from setup like you could if someone had initially gone in and made some, let's say, minor configurations to your device and you want to start from scratch. So the powerful setup command will initiate this basic basic system configuration dialog like it would in the iOS world and like it would on the LAN side of our Nexus devices. So we'll say yes, we want to enter the basic configuration dialog. Do we want to enforce a secure password standard? That would be a good idea in production, but I won't bother with it now. It says create another login account. Obviously, this would be a great time to do that. I won't bother with it here. In fact, what you'll see me doing is saying you know, no and yes, which I might not do in a production environment, but this is a micro nugget. So we want to keep this tour as brief as possible. I want you to see the options and their configuration would be straightforward. By the way, notice what these system configuration dialog boxes in brackets is the default. So if I hit enter carriage return on the keyboard right now, it will take whatever is in those brackets. So that's real nice. Here's our SNMP community strings. Obviously a great idea in production to configure if you're going to be managing the device with the simple network management protocol version 2C specifically. I'll enter the switch name. This is our CBT MDS 9K. And do we want to do an out-of-band management configuration? Certainly, yes, we do. We'll give our management IP address. We'll give our management net mask. And we'll configure a default gateway. Configure advanced IP options. Let me hit yes here so you can see what's available. Notice here we can configure the in-band management of our device to complement the out-of-band management that we did. It's obviously vSAN 1 that is the default for our in-band management configuration. I'll say no to that and we could enable IP routing. Enabling IP routing on this device will then allow us to go ahead and set things like a default route any static routes that we want on the MDS. So notice we can configure static routing, default networking, DNS, we can configure a default domain name for this device. And then obviously the SSH service is a really good idea. We'll generate an RS key for secure shell, we'll accept the default key bits, and no to Telnet is always an excellent idea. The next set of configurations get real specific to the storage area network. Like, how do we want to configure drops on our fiber channel interfaces? Are those going to be congestion based or will they be credit based using the buffering system? I'll go ahead and indicate the default that yes, we do want to configure the particular drop basis that we're going to use on our fiber channel interfaces. It says, okay, are you going to use the congestion approach or the no credit approach? We'll say CON for the congestion approach. It will want the number of milliseconds that you are going to utilize for calculating that drop. And we'll go ahead and hit enter for the default. Then it says the mode for the congestion or no credit drop we will use the E mode. Then the ability to enable an HTTP server. We'll say no to this now, but obviously we could configure this in production. The correct time, the correct time zone, the summertime settings, NTP settings, all the standard that we would expect for configuring the Cisco device. How about the switch port interface states? It's a really good idea to default those in a shutdown state. So that's the default. 
It's a great idea from a security perspective. What kind of trunking mode do we want? On, off, or auto? And then an important question for the MDS, what port mode do we want? Do we want port mode F for the default switch port port mode? I'll go ahead and say yes to that. Do we want configure default zone policy of permit or deny? Okay, we'll go ahead and accept the default of deny. Full zone set distribution, default zone mode, basic or enhanced, and we are given a preview of our configuration. So these are the commands that will be applied based on our responses to the prompts during the initial setup dialog. Notice we can edit this configuration here, or we can say, no, we don't want to edit this configuration. It looks great. It will say, use this configuration and save it. We'll say yes. Now, what could happen to you is if you have made anything that doesn't make sense for your particular device when you step through that. So maybe you make some settings that are conflicting. You will get either warnings as to what may go wrong, or you'll literally be told you have an error. An example of a warning might be like, you don't turn on SSH. So now your MDS device will say, hey, look, you realize that some of the management capabilities like XML-based management and things aren't going to work for you because SSH is not enabled. You would have the ability to go back and do this again, right? We know it's as simple as typing setup at the command line in order to rerun the system configuration dialog. So there you have it. Cisco makes it very simple for us, especially if we're used to the initial system configuration dialog from other devices, makes it very simple to bootstrap this device. By the way, if command line management of your SAN is not your cup of tea, then you can go ahead and utilize a graphical user interface. This basic system configuration dialog would give you enough config on the MDS device to where then you could connect with your graphical user interface for subsequent management. Well, I sure hope this micro nugget has been informative for you, and I'd like to thank you for viewing.